I just keep feeling like this klaxon horn's gonna go off and it's, man, your battle stations. Maybe the war's not over just because they say it is. When I think of Louis and Perini, I think forgiveness, hope, redemption. The first one was really about Lou's external struggle to survive, and this chapter is more about his battle for his soul. What wasn't covered in the first film was, of course, the effects of the war in the prison camp on my dad. The perseverance and the, the character that it took to, to live through that was the nature of the first story. And this story, though, is about the consequences of that. So this story picks up after Lou returns to the States, going through the turmoil of his memories of the war, his nightmares of Watanabe. He had post-traumatic stress disorder, which of course they didn't know what that was in those days. And uh, it was really taking a, a toll on his life and his marriage. We're gonna tell the story that people know, except in the second part of it, we're gonna have the same amount of time to do the story justice, in particular to how powerful a force Cynthia was in Lou's life. He adored her, always called her his girl. So in the beginning, Cynthia is head over heels for Lou. She's this wide-eyed, kind of naive girl, and he is charming, and he's experienced, and she's immediately attracted to him, or at least what she thinks he may be like. Right off the bat, there was something that happened when they met each other that deep down I think all of us want to have. But little does she know, I mean, really what she's getting herself into. He began to self-medicate, he began to become a very much a different person, very angry, very combative. So this point in his life is about him when he's almost at his most vulnerable to his own demons and his things that he can't hide from, he can't just figure his way through. They were at the, at the end of their rope. Their marriage was on the rocks, he was a complete mess. When you get to the end of your rope and you have no place else to turn, that's when people turn to God. There's many times when uh, God will reach down through other people. And in this instance, it was the eloquence and power of Billy Graham that was uh, the voice of God for Louis Zamperini. Four years after the World War II, my grandfather had a huge burden to see people come to know Christ. Uh, they got through the hardships of the war, and now they're looking, they, and it's like they're still missing something. And so my grandfather came and told them what they were missing, it was Jesus Christ. I think the power of forgiveness is huge and key to Louis moving on in his life. And when we pray for our enemies, forgiveness happens. And to forgive somebody releases the grip they hold on us. So I think it's fantastic that we are able to see the rest of the journey, which is probably the most interesting part because it's really the part that defines who is Louis Zamperini. Lou battling through his demons of PTSD and finding his redemption through his faith is really something that I think he would like people to know about. God had forgiven him. And so when he went back to meet his Japanese captors in Japan and he stood with them, he had nothing but love for them. And then he realized, God has changed my life. And I couldn't believe what happened. While I was still on my knees, my life changed in a matter of moments. 